Hello, welcome to Biograd TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. How Mozambique got independent? Mozambique was first invaded by the Portuguese in about year 1500, who then set up trading posts and forts. Later in the 19th century, when Europe started the scramble for the continent of Africa, Portugal undertook a series of military campaign to try and extend their colonial rule inland. But the main method it adopted to exploit the potential of the region was to award large tracts of land to commercial companies which were commissioned for that purpose. During the early periods of the 20th century, the Portuguese granted the administration of much of Mozambique to large private companies like the Zambezi Company, Mozambique Company, and the Nyasa Company. Although slavery had legally been abolished in Mozambique at the end of the 19th century, the chartered companies adopted a policy of forced labor using the African population to supply labor for mines and plantations. By the time the Second World War ended, in which Portugal fought, colonial control was already established over the whole of Portuguese East Africa. However, the territory was split into two parts, with one part under Lisbon's administration and the other under company administration. By the time the company's charter ended in 1942, all the regions they controlled were merged with the colony under Lisbon's administration. In 1951, Portugal made Mozambique an overseas territory in a bid to show to the world that the colony had a greater autonomy. Nonetheless, Portugal continued to maintain strong control over its overseas province. But nationalist movements began to grow with the increasing number of newly independent African nations after World War II. Also, the ill-treatment of the indigenous people further strengthened the growing sense of nationalism among Mozambicans. With time, many underground political movements were established in support of Mozambican independence. This movement began to carry out guerrilla attacks on the ruling authorities. This movement claimed that since policies and development plans were majorly set up by the ruling authorities for the benefit of Mozambique's Portuguese population, little consideration was given to Mozambique's tribal people and the development of its native communities. Many indigenous Mozambicans felt they had received too little opportunity or resources to upgrade their skills and enhance their economic and social situation to an extent comparable to that of the Europeans. Statistically, Mozambican Portuguese whites were wealthier and more skilled than the black indigenous majority. From the 1960s and early 1970s, the Portuguese government began implementing gradual changes with new socio-economic development as a means to water down the clamor for independence. But this did little to satisfy the hunger of the people for independence as they continued with their fights for independence. The major confrontation from the underground movement was from the Front for the Liberation of Mozambique, Frelimo. Frelimo started a guerrilla warfare campaign against Portuguese rule in September 1964. This conflict, along with the two Portuguese colonies of Angola and Portuguese Guinea, became part of what is known as the Portuguese Colonial War. From a military angle, the Portuguese regular army maintained control of the urban centers while the guerrilla forces focused on the rural areas in the north and west to weaken the influence of the colonial administration. The Portuguese dictatorship back in Portugal did not take lightly the ongoing guerrilla activity in their colony. A major military tactic was launched with large numbers of troops sent to Mozambique from Portugal but the guerrilla movement proved to be difficult to suppress. Even when Eduardo Chivambo Mondlin, the leader of Frelimo, was assassinated in 1969 with a parcel bomb, the movement continued relentlessly. By 1974, after 10 years of warfare, Frelimo had taken control of the whole of the northern part of the colony and was moving south. 
the fall of the authoritarian regime of Esther de Novo back in Portugal and the country's return to democracy also weakened the resolve. The Portuguese began negotiations with Frelimo and by September 1974, a provisional government was put in place made up of representatives from both sides. When the eventual constitution for the new nation was published in June 1975, it stated clearly that the president of Prelimo would also be president of the new nation to be known as Mozambique. And so on the 25th of June, Mozambique officially became independent and Samuel Markel, who was president of Prelimo at the time, became the new president of a free Mozambique. What have we missed out of this history? Let know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.